today we're talking about building a career in cybersecurity as a business analyst. And uh, we have Ayo Agumbiadi, who has over 20 years of experience in risk audit cybersecurity business analysis project management, um, you know, cloud, um, software, cloud and software solutions. He's going to be sharing a lot of information with us. Uh, so I started my career, um, yeah, almost two decades ago, more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, started with as a um, systems analyst and, uh, you know, um, at that point in time, you know, what we call information security then before it became cybersecurity. So it was not really too popular. So I got interested in, you know, IT audit when um, uh, there is this Nigerian man who was, who happens to be the first uh, CISAR certified in Nigeria or Africa. So, so I connected with him on, in, at Lagos, Nigeria. And then from there, I started having interest uh, in uh, information security audit and, and other things like that. And then from there, it uh, I started building my career. What else can I do? So the IT audit uh, um, career space actually gave me a launch in my career. And I got a job with one of the foremost bank in Nigeria from there. Uh, that's how my journey into information security, IT audit all started from, and from then it has, not, it has been a very great journey so far. No looking back, no regrets. Uh, so I've worked with, I work with two banks in Nigeria and I also work with uh, Deloitte, one of the big four. Um, that's where I got to know about uh, business analysis because uh, the Deloitte office in, in the United States trained me and we, not only me, uh, a couple of us. Uh, so the, it was a free training. So you can imagine despite the fact of the time difference, we're able to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote my CBAP, I wrote my PMP. You know, as a consultant, you want to understand requirements gathering, you want to understand elicitation, you want to understand the whole bunch when you talk to your um clients and funny enough a lot of us have always been a business analyst not by title but what we do exactly. is basically business analysis it's kind of business analysis right because you want yeah. to go to your client you want to do something there are questions that needed to be asked and they, yeah coming to canada has been so awesome as well I've worked with two uh, major uh, energy and utility companies in, in Canada, one in at Regina, Saskatchewan, uh, Sask Energy, and currently I'm with Altagas in Calgary. So one of the cybersecurity uh, personalities there, you know, helping the organization to remain safe. Awesome. So, um, you know, with your experience cutting across, you know, risk and audit, business analysis, and then, you know, your core focus, which is cybersecurity, um, how has being a business analyst, how has that helped you in your role as a cybersecurity analyst? How has that helped you personally? Uh, so one of the things that I would say is that uh, requirements gathering, understanding what requirements are, are requirements traceability, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, in security projects, you need to understand the, the requirements. And one of the mistakes that have been made in the past is that, you know, when a project is set or whether it's, uh, let's say it's a cybersecurity project, people don't really gather the um, requirements. They just go into it with some head knowledge that, oh, this is what we want to do. But mm -hmm. along the line, two, three months, four months down the line for a 12 months project, you discover that, oh, you are missing this piece, you are missing that. So um, kind of helped me to also work with other business analysts on different projects I have worked in the past, even I have a lot of projects right now that I'm involved in. And yeah. then we have business analysts and I'll be able to relate with them as well that we need mm -hmm. to understand um, security requirements from confidentiality, from integrity, from exactly. uh, availability, from privacy, from security, yeah. and all that stuff. So it, it's kind of intertwined because that yeah. helped me. it helped me a lot in my career and also helped me on how to uh, relate with other business analysts and project managers on project. So uh, building a career in cyber, cyber security as a business analyst, um, is um, there are two different... Um, um, career path, but then they are kind of today, uh, in the world we live today, is kind of intertwined. So you find that as a business analyst, you find yourself in technology projects, in um, cloud projects, in even security solution deployment projects. And then how do you add value as a business analyst? So you need to really get yourself grounded uh, in cybersecurity, at least the principles. It might not really go deep, but then I've seen some, funny enough, I've seen some business analysts that have really gone deep into cybersecurity. 
right? Uh, I, I don't know how many number of uh, opportunities people uh, try to reach out to me and say there are opportunities here, even as far as Japan, as wow. far as, uh, as uh, you know, you Qatar. Know. <laughs> I, I, I mean it, actually. So wow. I, talk, I said, I said it's, it's not because I'm extraordinarily good, yeah. but I can tell you that um, cyber security is something that uh, when you go into it, it's so interesting. The only challenge there is that you have to keep studying, you have to keep reading, you have to keep upskilling yourself. With, with every um, career path. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> sure, but, but this one is so, you know, it's so funny that, um, you know, things happen at the speed of light. You have mm -hmm. to be um, your, uh, the hackers guy out there. They are the, yeah, you know, they, they are like some time, 10 steps ahead of you. <laughs> and then you have to think like a, um, like um, an hacker it's, uh, himself or herself to be able exactly. to do the job. Exactly. And uh, so you, you, you can see. So, like I mentioned, the shortage is so huge. It has surpassed 4 million as we speak, actually 4.07 million. I'm sure if another survey is done the next six months, it's going to be much more than this. And it keeps growing in Africa, in all across the continent. It keeps it keeps growing, right? So, uh, this is a good opportunity for uh, for business analysts to, to jump into these and they get themselves uh, upskilled uh, on that. So, in every organization, they try to hold on to their cyber security skill set because you don't get to find them. Uh, so let's, for example, it, 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 you have it ten organizations, and you funny enough, maybe you have two two cybersecurity uh, analysts specialists um, in uh, each of those. It's difficult for them to lose them because right, everybody's trying to hold on to what they have, uh, or else project will suffer and uh, other things will suffer. Mm -hmm. And the uh, ISC squared, which I belong to, I have a CIS CISSP certification, which is one of the prime. Um, certification in um, cybersecurity, and I'm also preparing for CCSP. Uh, so it's it's great. And if ISC squared is try to reach out to universities, to to colleges, to high schools, and try to get people interested, need to get people have their interest in cybersecurity. And I've seen um, women initiatives whereby they are trying to bring in lots of girls into cybersecurity, and it's actually yielding a lot of uh, good good uh, feedback back in yeah. United States of America. So, uh, what are the rules of uh, business analysts in cybersecurity? There are quite a lot, but uh, I will just uh, dwell on these five. But rather than doing that, uh, this next slide, I really focus more on that. I can return to the initial slide. So according to Joe Beros, Beros uh, it says B is support company cybersecurity goals by what? Encouraging compliance with cybersecurity policies. Let's say, for example, uh, you are in North America and you are a business analyst working on a project that, uh, that has to do with banking and insurance yeah. you need to understand something called glba which is um a policy so which is a, a, a regulatory framework in united states yeah. to ensure that uh, financial and uh, insurance companies or organizations in the u.s comply with certain regulatory framework to protect uh people's uh, personal data right yeah. so you need to understand some of this you need to understand uh some like pci dss you know for for credit card uh you need to understand hipper h i uh p a a which is for yeah. health health insurance right if you are dealing yeah. with if you work in the health sector, you need to understand all this. So for every sector, let's say, for example, you work in um, industrial uh, control environment, something like energy and utilities, oil and gas, you know, something called operational techn technology, right? You need to understand the compliances, like NOXIP. These are the things that uh, ABA should be aware of so that you know, when you're on that project, you'll be able to add value. Another one is managing risk. How does ABA manage risk? It's so, it's so huge because as a BA, you are the one that has been saddled with the responsibility of, uh, you know, getting the requirements together, requirements to traceability, elicitation, getting across to the stakeholders. And then so, but as a BA, you have the, uh, the requirements documented properly. And then you've also reached out. Um, to the to the, the stakeholders or yeah to the stakeholders and they tell that these are the requirements is there anything you reach out to the user groups you reach out to the uh maybe the project director and everyone that is a stakeholder on the project and they come back and say, yeah we are missing out this and everybody signs off because with that when everybody signs off on the requirement you have gathered then you are covered yeah, yeah I know that along the line some things might come up that 
is beyond everybody's uh, control, but at least you've done your part and be able to minimize the risk. It's not as if the risk is eliminated. No risk is eliminated. Not is hundred percent assured, yeah. but at least you'll be able to minimize the risk to an assure to a reasonable assurance, whereby mm -hmm. stakeholders or the, the the project director or the project sponsor is is, is quite comfortable to yeah. be able to, to accept that risk, right? Another one is uh, implementing security tools. One of the good things for PA is that when they are several projects, they are one of the first people to be able to test out a solution. So you can imagine a BA who has worked on, let's say, five projects in a year. He also, he has had an opportunity to be able to work on different solutions. And with that, they can take that experience and take it to when you want to uh, implement a security tool, right? And one of the ways by which you do that is when you understand confidentiality. How does it affect uh, mm -hmm. your organization? Where you understand integrity, you understand mm -hmm. privacy, you understand security, you understand availability. Yeah. I believe yeah. to be able to, to tie all these things together go a long way. Mm -hmm.